The National Institute of Health has a hard time calling obesity a disease, but it is a disease. It is a disease of metabolism, and it causes so many other problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, uh, degenerative joint disease. So it is truly a disease. It increases your risk of cancer. Uh, heart disease, um, so many things, uh, it can't be classified as anything but a disease. But because of the social implications and the social attitudes toward obesity for so many years, the NIH has had trouble calling it a disease, but it truly is in all, all sense of the word. We tend to treat high blood pressure, diabetes. We spend billions and billions of dollars treating those diseases with other specifically, but they're all interrelated and are all intertwined with obesity. And if you treat obesity, you treat all of those diseases. So instead of treating them all individually, I think we can attack them all as a single group by treating obesity itself. So it's kind of like treating cancer without actually attacking the tumor. We need to attack the tumor, and the tumor is, is obesity. Well, surgery becomes an option when all other modalities have failed. Unfortunately, there are no other good modalities. Medical therapy, despite the fact that everyone talks about it, has been a, a dismal failure when only a very small percent of patients can lose any type of substantial weight with medical therapy, surgery really becomes the option for almost anyone suffering from severe obesity. And it's a shame that patients delay their surgical intervention until their health really begins to fail when we should consider it much earlier. The big advancements in bariatric surgery has been safety. Uh, we've gone from open operations that were highly invasive to laparoscopic procedures that while we're doing the exact same operation uh, laparoscopically as we are, are doing open, it's tolerated far more physiologically by these very sick patients. These operations are tools and only tools. They have to be combined with diet and exercise in order for them to be successful, not only in the long term but also in the short term and patients need to understand that. Now there are tools if you look at the lap band, the gastric bypass, the duodenal switch, they're operations of different power. So we have the least powerful operation is a lap band. That's going to take more determination, more education, uh, more um, commitment by the patient for success. The duodenal switch is the most powerful operation that we offer that requires less individual effort on the part of the patient, but still takes an effort to make sure that you maintain your nutrition, that you eat properly, you take your appropriate vitamins. So it's still a very much of patient involvement in the process. And there is nothing free in this world. There's always a price that needs to be paid. And there's no replacement for diet, exercise, and eating properly. But these two are tools that are very powerful that help people do that. For more information about this physician or to schedule an appointment, please call our referral line or visit notbiggerjustbetterhealth.com.